Hi, everybody. And uh, this is Functional Training. I'd like to welcome you here today. Hopefully, everyone's staying uh, healthy. Um, so we can all get uh, through this. So we're going to keep active. Today's Functional Training workout, we're going to move in all directions. You're going to need maybe one or two dumbbells, so a hand weight if you do have it. Um, and if you do, even better, have a heavier weight or a um, big jug of water or um, a box of some kind that you could use um, for a heavier movement. We can take advantage of any household objects you have. Otherwise, we're gonna start with the dynamic um, warm up and uh, uh, increase our mobility and work on some balance, okay? So we're gonna start off um, in the standing position. And of course, we're gonna do our lunge pivot reach. So exaggerate your step. You'll notice I'm not wearing shoes. So whenever we're doing any kind of balance, it's best to practice without our shoes. We really kind of feel um, our feet digging into the floor. Okay, for our base support, it can really help with improving your balance, especially dynamic balance. Okay, so exaggerated lunge position. You're going to go down, drop your um, back leg, and your opposite arm will reach across your body. So from this angle, basically that looks like this. Slight reach. You're not reaching too far. You're just kind of reaching over, which will be a nice stretch, as well as it'll improve your balance because it'll force you to stay balancing okay that's what that looks like once you've completed that reach you're going to pivot your feet 180 degrees and then other side reaching over okay switch again down reach down reach one more and then you're going to drop down so down here drop that back leg place your right hand beside your left foot and your other hand straight to the ceiling and hold that position right there. This is a really good step for the hips to be thoracic spine. Now, other hand, so your left hand will go down on the inside of your foot and you'll rotate the other way, pointing your right hand to the ceiling. Back to the middle, push yourself back up and complete this movement again. One, pivot. Two, Back to this position, reach. Last one, you're gonna drop on this side. Reach, drop the knee, take that left hand, side the foot, your right hand stretches to the ceiling. Hold this position right here. Switch hands, so now that right hand goes beside the foot and you're rotating the other, other direction. and relax. We're gonna stay down on this position now, and you're gonna bring your other knee in. So now you're in a kneeling position on your knees here. What we're gonna do is really warm up the muscles of the hip, which can really help um, support and stabilize as you're performing movements that involve balance and coordination. And it's just good to do, <laughs> okay? Especially small little muscles uh, around the hip here, especially the glutes. So what you're gonna do is pretend like you're in a four-point position to start and then place your right hand on your hip. Bring that right foot straight out. Lean back a bit. Now you're doing leg lifts in this position, okay? So just straight up and down. And if you need to move your hand for supporting your body weight, you can. Now what I want you to do is while you're keeping that up, you're gonna to start to feel the glutes working here, is bring the leg more forward and do a couple here and then bringing it behind I'm doing a couple here. So we're gonna go one, two in the middle, forward. One, two, back, one, two. Again, middle, one, two, forward, one, two, back, one, two. Bring that knee down and relax for a sec. You'll feel that burning a bit, that's great. Switching sides, right hand is supporting, left leg is out, hand can be here. Just going to go up and down and start, get the feel for it, not too fast, not too excessive range of motion, just right here. Now we'll go forward, one, two, back, back to the middle, we'll go twice each way, forward, back, once more each, one more lap, middle, forward, and back and drop and again you'll feel that kind of working 
Okay, great. Finally, in this position, nice transition, four point pose, hands and knees, hands should be underneath your shoulders, not over here, not too close to the stomach either. So you're supporting yourself so your back can be in a neutral position. And what you're going to do is extend your left leg straight behind you. And what you want to try to do is keeping your hips level. So try not to hit to one side. Try to keep the hips nice and straight. And I want you to really try to engage the glute muscles. Really try to flex and track those glutes as you are maintaining this position. It's a good idea to keep reminding yourself to lift the leg or pulsing it. So that will gravity and the fatigue will slowly start bringing it down to the floor. And so your foot touches. So if you notice that, it means you're getting fatigued. You should keep it engaged. So the higher, the better. And then at the same time, your right arm is extended forward. Now hold this position for a few seconds. And then we're going to start the movement. So you're going to bring your right elbow to the middle and your left knee. So they touch underneath your body. And then extend out and hold that for three seconds. They're fully engaged. And back to the middle. And here, your core muscles should also be nice and tight as you're performing this movement so you're not loose in the trunk and upper body. In, out. We'll do two more times. In, out, two, three, once more. In, out, one, two, three. Switch sides. Remember, this is still our warm up, but a nice thorough warm up. Okay, so opposite, right leg is extended back. Hold that for a few seconds, engage the glutes. Get the feel for it. Left leg, or sorry, left arm is extended forward. Bring to the middle and extend out three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Last time. One, bring them in, sit back. Let's take two deep breaths. Into the nose. And out of the nose. Always take a couple breaths or gather yourself before you stand up too quickly. Okay, let's grab a quick water and then we'll head to our bigger movements. They're going to need a hand weight for this one, just one. Nothing too heavy. Place that down here. Give yourself another five to 10 seconds. Okay, so we're going to do our big movement here. So this basically moves the whole body, but not just moving it, but what's happening as well. So you're coordinating um, your limbs. A lot of motor skills involved here, a lot of thinking and focus. You gotta be mindful when you're going through the movements. You can't just be on your phone as you're doing it. Okay. So, a lot of dynamic balance as well and stabilization. So, pretty much all components that we're trying to um, take advantage of with the functional training. We're gonna do a Romanian deadlift or just a single legged hinge deadlift um, with an upper body movement. Okay. So, grab that with your right hand. What we're gonna do is your right foot will be lifted up and you're going to extend it straight back behind you and bend your front knee slightly to allow yourself to lower down and that weight will be in your right hand and you're going to lower it down past the knee and then as you bring it forward back to the starting position you're actually going to complete the movement with an overhead press okay so hopefully you can see that you're down you do your one-legged deadlift, and then on your way up, press the weight over your head. Make sure you have enough space above your head. If you don't, you can stay in a lower position. If you're taller, like myself, like so, I have to keep a bend in my knee. I can't fully extend. So here we go. Down, nice and low, and then on the way up, press it overhead and return the weight. Let's do three more, nice and slow on the way down, and then explode on the way up. Again, down, hold it, up, explode, once more, and okay. So there's a lot happening there, right? 
upper body, lower body, core, balance, coordination, a little bit of everything. Okay, other hand now. So this is the non-dominant side that you're balancing on. If you're right, if you're on the right side. So what we're gonna do now is our left hand of the weight. So that means that our left foot is going behind, lowering down, up and press. Again, lowering down, our right leg is bending. On the way up, we press. Now let's go four. Three. Two. Last one. And done. Great. Let's put that weight down. Okay. And we're going to lower down to the floor. So, again, always transition in stages. So, half kneeling or a lunge position. Take a couple breaths. And then to both knees. And then sitting on your heels, you kind of gradually lowered yourself down. Um, if your heart rate's elevated and the intensity is a little high for that movement, during recovery, your heart rate peaks. It gets really high. And if you just drop what you're doing and stop and go down to the floor, sometimes you can get dizzy. And it uh, isn't a very nice feeling. Um, so we're not going for that, right? We're quality over quantity for the functional training to have all these movements done correctly with as much energy that you have in the tank. So slowly lower yourself down and take a minute, okay? So what we're gonna do now is uh, another total body uh, movement on the floor. So that one was standing, it required a lot of balance and coordination and power to slow the weight up while balancing on one side. So it's not easy, um, which is why you don't need a lot of weight to perform that movement. For this one on the floor, we're gonna do a nice old fashioned kind of, um, child memory exercise on the floor. We're just gonna do what's called bear crawls and there's many different variations, but um, this one, we're just gonna keep it nice and straightforward. So this one, you will need lots of floor space and try to take advantage of the room that you're in, hopefully has space. So basically you're gonna be in a four point position, lifting your knees off the ground. So now you're supporting your weight. You have to feel that in your upper body and you're literally gonna do like a crawl. So one hand steps and one foot steps, one hand, one foot, one hand, one foot, and backwards. Opposites, like so, even small little steps. Again, step, 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 and backwards, step. Step, almost like a little mini Spider-Man. We'll go one more lap, so there and back. And backwards. And then. okay, excellent. So feel the shoulders burning, the core is engaged. A lot is going on there as well. Okay, slow on the way up. Deep breath, fully stand up. And we'll walk around, take an active recovery and a break for the water drink. And you're gonna need your hand weight once more for this next exercise. Drop that down. Another 10 seconds recovery. Okay, we're gonna do a torso ro rotation type exercise. So last week we introduced a version of a wood chop. So basically any kind of rotation comes from the trunk here. We've done many different ways. Um, and we're gonna do a lunge version of the wood chop. So you're gonna take that hand weight, holding it on both sides like so. And because we wanna incorporate different body parts in time, you're gonna take a big step back and do a reverse lunge. You're gonna lower the weight down to this side of the body. You're not gonna do what I'm doing here, which is I'm pausing. You're not going to drop the knee to the floor. It's only going to be 
a few inches from the floor, lowering the weight down. And on the way up, you're rotating. That's that trunk rotation. You really want to engage the core and the glutes so that you're not using your upper body as the primary mover. Here, down and rotate. Okay. And then what we want to do is we're going to alternate uh, sides. So stepping back, here, rotate step back. And then you're going to switch. So from this angle, down, rotate, down, rotate. Okay, we're going to do 20 all together. Okay. Really focus on going slow on the way down and then quicker or explosive on the way up. Okay. Here we go. Halfway there. And done. Okay. All right. Another active recovery here. Be standing, move around. Okay, and to finish our bigger movements here, you're going to need a heavier weight. So if you had a kettlebell, kettlebell, that'd be great. If you don't, some kind of heavy object that's not too awkward. Otherwise, you can use two hand weights to hold on to, um, or pretty much any household object you can get your hands on. Okay, so we're going to do a squat with the figure eight pattern. So this. What we're doing here is isometric endurance, strength and endurance, which means you're holding that contraction as opposed to movement. You're holding it in this position. Your legs are burning. You're getting the endurance. You're getting that nice burn that you want, um, building up that lactic acid and fatigue, which is a nice feeling afterwards. Um, and we're going to do a pattern, so involving coordination. This is a functional training component. And you're going to basically draw figure eight through your legs while you maintain this position. You're never fully extended. Your quads, hamstrings, glutes, everything are working the entire time. Okay? So we're going to do 10. And then within resting, without extending, relax. We're going to do 10 the opposite direction. Okay, here we go. All right, ready? Feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. Getting in your squat position. Get ready. And here we go through the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Opposite direction. Turn it around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and done. Okay, we'll put that away. I should have noted you probably should not do that barefoot, <laughs> just in case. Because if you don't do the coordination very well and you miss tying the handoff, you could drop it. <laughs> so you want shoes for that one. Okay, transitioning back down to the floor. So half kneeling, a couple breaths. On the knees, both of them here, sitting down on the heels. <clears throat> and then finally sitting down all the way on the floor. Okay. Uh, we're just going to do a quick set of Russian twists. A nice ab exercise to finish off before we do our cool down stretches. 
So you're here in this position in a V. Feet are planted on the floor, hands behind you to prop yourself up. You're going to lift your feet slightly off the ground, make sure they never touch the floor in the process. Hands in front of your chest. And you're going to rotate to touch your hands to the floor beside you. Two, three, five. Don't go too fast. This is a good tempo here. Six, two, three, seven. Halfway there. Five more. One, two, three, four, and finish. Okay, excellent. Staying right in this position, we're going to do a butterfly stretch. Just a stretch the groin area, adductors, inner thighs, hip flexors. Just to get that nice stretch from the movements we did. Pressing down slightly on the knees with your elbows. Okay, and now have one leg in front for a hurdler stretch for your hamstrings and calves. So don't grab your toes, just point them straight up and you'll feel that already. And then slightly lean forward if you need to for more. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lean back, bring that foot in, switch. Now your left leg is in front. And again, pointing the toes straight up to the ceiling and try to point them towards yourself. That's when you really feel the stretch underneath. And just hold this here and lean forward slightly. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two, and one. Lean back. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to switch to our pigeon pose stretch. So right foot is down in front, knee is bent, left leg goes behind you, and you're going to move your body on top of that front leg. And we're resting our thigh down on the floor to start. And then if it's not difficult enough of a stretch, you're going to lift your body right on top so that that is off the ground. Feel that pull. Hold this right here. And we're going to go five, four, three, two, one. Drop it back, back down on the floor. You're still stretching. You're holding it here. Five, four, three, two, and lean back. Pull the legs in. Relaxed. Switching sides. Left leg bent in front on the floor. Right leg straight behind you. And you're in position here, still rested on the side of your thigh, resting on the ground. And then raising up over top. You don't have to do this, but if you want a bit more of a stretch, holding it here. Five, four, three, two, one, drop the weight down, but you're still maintaining this pose. Five, four, three, two, one. Pull the back leg in, leaning back, relax. Transition to our half kneeling pose over here. Hip flexor stretch for 90 degree angles, with both legs. Place your opposite arm, so it's the right leg, your left arm across. Push yourself down into that position. Rotate your body so that you're facing this way. Five, four, three, two, one. Rotate, release, come back to the uh, starting position. And we're going to go down once more. Holding it here, rotating. And hold that stretch. Lean back. Not actually leaning this way. Here, sitting back. Five, four, three, two, and one. Switch sides. Ninety degree angles. Start, and then leaning forward, opposite side. Rotate.
back to the middle, relax. And let's go down once more, push forward, opposite side and hold. Three, two, and one. On both knees, sitting on your heels. We're gonna do a child's pose to finish. So reaching forward, tuck your head down to the floor and hold this position. Slide back, take a deep breath in and out. And done. Okay. Thank you everyone for doing the functional training workout. I hope you got um, a bit of exercise there and worked our whole body in different movements and um, some balance and coordination as well. Um, so hopefully uh, you can all stay well and um, stay safe and healthy and we'll hopefully see you in person real soon. Thanks.